Tayson is now below a team, and that's not fun. But they actually have... Oh my god! And that's a Danish player who got absolutely destroyed. Hey guys, GK back with another bot video. This time I'm gonna be looking at E11's own Tayson and his completely new trio of Mongrel and Mitro. That's a completely insane trio, and they showed it by winning the Lopezzi Cup semifinals by a huge margin. But let's jump in and see how they do. I can see that they're landing Stark, this completely new spot. Let's see. Ooh, Tayson. Ooh, he's getting 50, but he wins this. And that's an easy first kill, I think. Ooh, he didn't get it. Oh, I think I think Mitro got it. I think Mitro got it. Look up here, he, Mitro got it. So Tayson uh, finishes Mitro's kills and the, the Monger got one as well. So it's two kills right off the bat. Ooh, and splashes for the team as well. So they are very healthy. It's a very good start for this trio. It's a very interesting trio as well. Three kills already. Ooh, uh, I think Iron Man should be around here properly. And he's right here. There's also this new thing about this place. You can get the Stark Rifles. And I, I saw uh, from watching these games live yesterday that there's a lot of people who prefers to get these gold or purple Stark Rifles instead of normal ARs. So that's a little bit of a meta change that uh, I'm very excited to see. What is actually really, really interesting about this trio is that it's the pretty much the old trio of Mongrel and Mitro and then Benji Fishy in the last FNGS of trios he last year. But with Tayson instead. And Tayson he won the FNGS last season, so might actually be upgrade. And that trio won everything back then, so I think there's a really good chance of some really huge performances. And we already saw it in this semifinals. Tayson does bring the um, legendary Stark rifle. Let's see. Mongrel he he has an orc and he has that uh, purple pump. Mitro Brings a Stark Rifle as well. So, only one good pump, but Stark Rifles. And those, the legendary one does above 50 damage when you're pretty close. So you can actually beam people so hard. If you have two or three of those, you can actually uh, one, two, three people uh, and kill them nearly instant. Ooh, it's exciting. Does Tayson go for the upgrade of his shotgun here? He does. He, he wants a purple pump. Let's see, Tayson is just farming right now. That's why I'm looking a little bit around to see what his teammates are doing. It's actually important when you look at trios that you look at the whole perspective. Because in these top, top trio trios, uh, people would do different things to meet all the goals of the team. Mitro was looking for more shield, maybe more weapons, by looking for an airdrop while uh, Tayson was farming. Uh, and you can see Mongrel uh, looting the rest. I think they want to kill this team who took the airdrop from Mitro just before. Yeah, you see them there. And then we, we can see from the spectator point of view that there's only two people. They are lacking their third uh, for whatever reason. So... I'm not sure if Mitro, Mongrel and Taser knows this, probably not, but it doesn't really look like they really give... Ooh, and look at the beams from the, uh, from Mitro and Mongrel, and that's the Stark Rifles for you. Ooh, and this, this actually honestly looks like a really, really easy couple of points. This is six points worth. And Taser just getting, and that's, ooh, that's a good shot. 190. He didn't have a lot, uh, didn't have a lot of health, but rather hit 190 and then just kill him. Ooh, that's... I don't know what this guy's gonna do, no, that's two easy kills for Tayson, and he's just holding out his shotgun, no shenanigans, no fancy business, he's just doing exactly what's needed. Well played, such an easy uh, clean off for the team. This is their first tournament together, I believe, so um, very exciting, lots of potential for, and maybe maybe to be uh, the best trio coming in. It did show they were the best in this semi-finals at least, 17 and up in placements. That's uh, three points each. So um, placements are starting now, and I, I can't imagine that a lot of people are going to uh, to die uh, in the next couple of of zones. It's most likely just going to be uh, people rotating in, trying to get middle zones, trying to stay on these rifts, uh, trying to get good positions, replace buildings, etc. Get the last bit of loot, and then just box up and wait for the zones to appear. This might actually be one of those games where where Jason and his team just rolls over the entire lobby. You see, they actually really split right here. Oh, and Tayson uses a, a, a bounce, or oh, crash pad, sorry, to get down to his team, and Mongol makes an easy kill. And those guys were actually uh, really split, the big John and Crawl on the other side. Lunex, I think, is his team. So, there were, those guys were actually really split. That's actually really surprising. That was an easy kill. We just saw them kill two teams without actually getting hit. Not even once. So, they actually just gaining loot. Tayson is dancing here. Ooh. Oh my god! There's no way! Mongol completely saved him! Mongol and Mitro saved him so hard! <laughs> That's a good teammate! If that was solo, 
He was probably dead. Right now we already have seven kills on the on the guys. Forty five players alive, sixteen teams. So placement for every team that dies right now are piling in. And the zone is actually on top of Stark. So they take this rift and they go back. It's a very aggressive game from the guys right now. A little bit different of a world view than what we saw with Dexa last time, which was a very stacked late game oriented play. This is more of a fighting style of game. And the exciting st uh, thing about watching these guys play is that they are close to each other without being close to each other, like being in the same box kind of thing. They're just very, very quick to help each other. You just saw it with Taysen getting boogie bombed. Mongrel and Mitra was kind of far away from him, but they still killed the guy instantly because they knew where the danger was and the danger was on Taysen. So they were helping each other so quickly. And that's just teamwork for you. Let's see what the guys are doing right now. The only is just... Just uh, replacing Stark. They go back to the hometown. So 44 people alive, still 15 teams. So not the most stacked game that we talked about, but the guys no longer W keying. The ass is off there now. Taking it a little bit slow and they're going for this air drop. Loot wise, weapon wise, they are set for late game, so it looks like they're going for it. The only thing they will don't have that much of is these uh, beautiful, beautiful impulses. Everyone who's already played trios uh, in stack games knows that these impulses are one big uh, hide fiesta in late game. Everyone wants to try and use three of them at the same time to get the high ground. Ooh, and he gets four more here on Mitro. So that's really good for him. Sitting in the middle of the zone, made a huge, not a, a tall base, but a flat base. And they made, I think, five or six boxes. So that's actually pretty interesting. Ooh, and Taysan is actually investing a lot of bullets to clear this first, so he can actually shoot people rotating. Okay, so Mongol is, is having a golden orc, and, and Taysan and, and Mitro, as we talked about in the early game, are still having the Stark rifle. So, exactly like I saw uh, the tendency last night, um, to be when I watch these live, uh, a lot of these top players are not are not um, prioritizing these scars or normal ARs anymore. They want this new Stark rifle. So that's an interesting shift of the meta. Oh, and uh, that's a good thing about sitting in the middle of this third zone. There's a really huge chance that fourth zone plays in the middle. It nearly always does. Taysen, Mongol, and Mitro. They get the next zone. Uh, the only thing about this one is they do not have the possibility to get the 50-50. Because it's gonna be out here on the on the sides. So this time they are going to have to rotate next time. But um, it's not gonna be a long one because they're sitting right in the middle of the fourth zone. So the fifth zone, the 50-50 zone uh, are going to be pretty easy for them. Uh, they can probably just use one crash pad or one impulse or one bounce pad. I uh, know they have everything. So I'm gonna be happy about that. I also think if we're, we're talking a little bit more about dead side and congested side. That it's gonna be a little bit different in the midst of this season. Because right now. There is a lot more rifts and mobility on the map, meaning that the trios who are uh, in the highway, as I, as I like to call it, the side with the most congested uh, teams, they have a bigger chance of getting to the dead side, meaning that there might actually be a, swift, a, sh a shift in the meta, where there might not even be that much of a dead side in some of these games. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to play out yet, I'm very excited to see it, but people will have the opportunity to rift really far on the map, to drive really far, and the, the boats are still in the game, so it's going to be interesting to see if there's going to be any shifts in how people rotate and where they are on the map. In this game, for sure, not the most stacked one, but that's not really a con side more congested than, than any other side. So that's a, that's a really interesting point here. Closing in on the late game, and there's not been anything happening for the last five minutes, actually. Other than me waffling my ass off about everything and nothing in this game. 39 players and 14 teams alive right now. And here comes the 50-50. Well, I, I think it's it's probably gonna play over here or something. One of these sides. Come on. Iron Jesus me. I was completely wrong once again. I know nothing. It's a north zone. So it's a north zone and the guys have to go a little bit down a hill. I think one crash pad, one bounce pad. Taysan has two bounce... Uh, uh, Mongol has two bounce pads. Taysan has a bounce pad and Mitra has a bounce pad. But what they did now was they... Spread them out so if everyone, anyone gets in trouble and just needs a bounce pad for whatever reason, they made sure that everyone has at least one. So that's a really good trick. You want to do it with impulses if you can, but the thing is about impulses, it takes an inventory slot. Seems like the guys want to put up a normal impulse. Okay, th th it's a guard, a it's guard impulse. Oh, that's so smart. They they turned around the angle so they could land on high ground and overtake the other high because the other high was already going down. And that's why it's so important to, uh, to hold your map control. 
the other guys who had the mountain before went down early. And when you went, you could go down early. The teams coming late into the zones can can just ramp over you, and that's exactly what happened. A team of this caliber of Taser and Mongol and Mitchell, they see things like this, and now they have high ground in 50-50. Okay, the zone, it actually plays that way eh, because there's no one down here. But the guys are right here, and they, there's no one on this side, so kind of eh, that zone, and they, I think they're just going to grief the opposite high now. They're going into late game with 7 kills. I think they're going to be happy if they if they get 5, five to 7 kills eh, more. So if they can win this game with like 14, 15, 13 maybe, then they're going to be happy, I think. An early bouncer for Tayson, and... He uses a crash pad as well. Oh my god, he gets so far ahead. And he's gonna build up probably instantly. Oh, a team is doing the same. Mongol lands on them. Oh my god, this is clean stuff. Ooh, a little bit of a nice edit from the opponent. But Tayson leaves no prisoners. That's an easy kill for Tayson. Well played from him. And he's just so confident. You see, he's not afraid of making the edits. He's not, he's not afraid of taking the fight when he has the edit. Some people would have played defensively there, but... Not for Tayson, and he uses his Silver Surfer to land right on Maicho and drop him mats. My guess is that Maicho has been tapping, and they are all very good on mats. And you see Mongol right now, he's on top. He has uh, two or three layers down to his teammates, so he's actually uh, securing the high if any team decides to do an impulse play. Tayson is connecting here, very well done. And ooh. Tayson is now below a team, and that's not fun. Oh my god, and that's a Danish player who got absolutely destroyed 170 and it didn't even look it didn't even look like Tayson had an idea he was there He just ran right in and shot, shot him in the head. It's a nice shot from Tayson who's playing a very nice game And what I was saying just before Look at how quick Tayson and Maitro and Mongol in this in this instant it was Tayson before it was Maitro Is at getting ahead of the zone so they can shoot back Make sure that they are the team in the front of the zone always this could very easily be another kill for the guys. 12 teams left. There's not a lot of teams dying. And I think there's a wall there. Buck wall perhaps. And connects to the house here to get more security. And you still see it. Uh, they don't play on the same layers. And that's very important in this patch. Oh, that comes with an impulse. It doesn't, doesn't really do anything though. It's so important that you don't play on the same layer. If... Really good pro teams are going to do a triple impulse play up to take high ground. And, and if you're in the same layer, you might get knocked down or they might just overtake your high instant. So if you're playing different layers, you are very, very hard to take high ground from. At least harder to take high ground. I want to see Mongol is going down. Maitro is down as well. And Tayson is the one right now playing the, the higher ground. You can see Maitro and Mongol down here if you look at the mouse right now. So it's Tayson securing the win. From the high ground and the Mongol and Maito are the ones going for the for the place. 16 kills right now. Seven players alive. This is such an easy win. And like a lot of players always praise Maito Mongol uh, for for their ability to play aggressive. Tayson is is also very good at playing aggressive, but he's also more known of a, uh, of a smart late game player, right? I'm not sure who made the call to take high ground in the 50-50 zone. That was such a nice call, like that was that was amazing. That was amazing, and, and and that just made that win look so easy because that rotate was was so smart. Well played to the guys. What a win from Tayson, a uh, Mongol and Maito. Thank you for watching, guys. I will be back with more GK World Reviews.